the respondent is a 16-year-old female. She entered the United States uh, in November of the past year. At that point, she entered uh, apparently with documents belonging to another individual. Now, you said that they tortured you. Um, what did you mean by that? One time, they, when they had me and my cousin, mm -hmm. they took us outside. Actually, um, Chris, didn't you have a phone call you needed to make? I, to I make have to make a phone, phone call, call, but I'll, I'll be right back. You're in good hands with Marisa. That's what you were saying? That they, they took us outside mm -hmm. and it was very hot mm -hmm. and they put, made us um, on the Versace way sur des pierres. Um, they, uh, we had to um, get on our knees on, on the rocks, mm -hmm. on the ground. Et elles étaient très chaudes et pointues. And the rocks were very um, hot and pointed, mm -hmm. sharp. And they left us there for hours. Mm. Did the soldiers ever do anything else to you? This is a very vulnerable girl who, um, you know, has lost control of a lot of things in her life, and I wanted her to be in control of this case. Um, another big part of that was I knew how important it was to create trust between, uh, among the three of us. Um, if she doesn't trust us, she's not going to tell us the full story, and credibility is really the most crucial part of asylum cases. Where did the Presidential Guard take you and Fatima? They, they took us to their jeep and they drove us to jail. And what happened when you and Fatimata got to jail? They, um, they brought us to an interrogation room and they demanded that we tell them exactly where my uncle was. And what, what happened when you were in the interrogation room? They tortured me. I'm sorry, please keep your voice up a little bit. What? They, they tortured me. What do you mean by that, Fatima? Um, one of the guards, he, he, he came in with his pants undone and they, um, they took turns. <coughs> they took turns violating Fatuma me. You testified that soldiers came to your school. Is that correct? Yes. How many soldiers came to your school? I don't remember. How many times did they come to your school? three times on three separate occasions. Where were you when they came to your school? I was in my classroom. Were you in the same class with Fatumata? No, we were in different classrooms. Are your teachers there Malenke? Yes. Is your vice principal Malenke? Yes. When the soldiers came to your school, did they beat your teachers? No. Did they arrest your teachers? No. Did they rape any of your teachers? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. I'm not sure this is relevant, Mr. Speaker Halter. May I be heard, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Go ahead. She testified that one of the reasons she's being persecuted is because of her Malenke origin. I'm simply showing that other people similarly situated of the same social group, the same ethnicity, pardon me, who are in the same places were not treated the same, calling into doubt the causal connection between the two. What I saw from this case, number one, is the value of attorneys uh, to asylum applicants. In this particular case, for example, the respondent who had a, what I thought was a relatively strong case, but so many things can go wrong. Number one, the way she tells her story. Number two, uh, the emotional barriers that they face, as well as, as, well as uh, language barriers. 
attorneys coming in, helping a, an individual get emotionally able to tell their story. The most important part of any case is the story that's told on the stand by the uh, asylum applicant. And attorneys, in this case especially, you saw that the uh, pro bono attorneys spent hours and hours getting her to the point where she could tell her story in a consistent way uh, that came off credible. The knowledge and skills that I gained um, in the course of representing our client were incredible and skills that I definitely, um, you know, can now use in my private practice. What I noticed in going against pro bono attorneys is that there are major differences between a normal pro bono attorney and someone who maybe does immigration law. Pro bono attorneys may spend more time preparing because this is their opportunity to be in court to actually make presentations, which means sometimes we're inundated with additional documentation, but more likely that the actual record has all the documents that we would find necessary. So I would definitely recommend it to anyone and the resources and support are there to get involved and you can make an incredible difference in the lives of, you know, children as well as adults who are, are fleeing persecution and deserve the best our laws have to offer.